is kind of the job that you did on him. But just what did you think of the job that you did on him? And, you know, what, what do you think you can do better the next time? Um, I did okay. I think that I can frustrate him maybe a little more. Um, there's a couple times where I got caught lagging and um, he made some, some nice plays. There's a couple times where I made the wrong read, but it's all improvement. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm glad we got the win. For you, I, I know he always wants to get in front and then just keep you behind. Uh, how do you kind of try to avoid that, stay in front? How do you do different things? Sometimes give him a shot, sometimes give him a different look. Right. That was kind of um, what I was talking about when I made some, some wrong reads. Uh, there's one time I tried to go under because I, the last couple times I went over top and, and he kind of sealed me um, going in the lane. So he had uh, either a little floater or he had that lob pass to, to Willie. And I went under, and he had a step back three. But um, again, man, you just got to pick and choose your spots to to try to uh, make it difficult on him. Um, don't give him the same diet. He's too good of a player just to give him the same thing. And um, then at the end of the day, it's it's a team it's a team effort. Um, I can't can't do it by myself. But so um, again, I think we did a great job. Uh, made it very very frustrating for him. But personally, I think I can do better. Jim Ozarski. Um, to follow it up, Drew, I, I hope this doesn't seem like a, a strange question. When you mentioned intent and, and being uh, doing making things difficult, after um, you know Chris hit the three to make it 109, 105, you know he pulls down a rebound. You pick him up immediately in the backcourt in the final seconds there, and it causes him to look for two teammates to try to screen you off. And, and the reason I bring that up is because it left him and Brooke one-on-one -on -one at the rim. There was nowhere else for him to go because his, and Brooke gets the, the block. Um, did, was that intentional on your part? And then I guess if not even, just the fact that it required two players maybe help that team construct the defense there in, in a key moment. Yeah, um, especially down the stretch, you don't want anybody of that caliber just to be comfortable. And I feel like right when he caught the rebound, he usually, or he's used to, just kind of walking it up and surveying the floor and being able to see everything. And I think that <clears throat> in that moment, I just thought, uh, make him scramble, make him think about uh, me pursuing him and, and coming after him. And at that point, I feel like I did my job to send him to the big. And Brooke, man, I'm, I'm telling you, he, uh, <clears throat> he he doesn't get the credit he deserves. Uh, the way he kind of, the way he protects the rim is, is, is awesome. And to go up against somebody like Luca or Luca going up against somebody like Brooke, um, that's a that's a tough play to make. Uh, so I, I felt like I did a pretty good job of just trying to get him scrambled up and, and rush him. Um, and, and obviously, rewind it right back there. The, the Chris three to, to the back to back threes. I mean, we, I know we've asked you about him this year in terms of the, the way he can kind of create space, find space, make big shots. But uh, those obviously were two two huge threes uh, right when they took that lead. Yeah, that's what Chris does. Um, I think down the stretch and, and being able to make big plays and uh, really at any moment, if it's in the if it's in the post, getting to the to the free throw line, uh, and then we saw those two big threes down the stretch. So um, he definitely he he never really gets rushed. Uh, you know, he takes his time and surveys the surveys the floor and, and makes the right weed for for most of the time. So um, just the trust I feel like I and, and the team have in him is is huge. Zora Stevenson. Continue, continuing on the topic of Chris, what stands out about his ability to facilitate? So not just to make shots, but to make plays. I mean, he is leading this team in assists right now. I think that a lot of teams think that he's just a scorer, you know? And uh, just the way that he gets into the paint, the way that he sees the floor, um, the way that, like you said, makes plays for other people, I think is, is very underrated. So. Um, but just even from last year, me thinking like, all right, well, Chris is a scorer first, um, doesn't doesn't uh, let go of the fact that he makes plays for everybody else and makes his team better, better as well. One more to Kane Pittman. Hey, Drew. Um, you guys haven't been in too many close games so far this year. And I was thinking back to Boston on opening night. You were the one who hit the big three. I know you didn't get the win tonight. It was Chris that took over a little bit and took those shots. How do you think you, Chris, and Giannis are, are figuring out those late possessions? How have you seen the execution when you have been in close games? Yeah, I think it's a smooth pairing, <clears throat> to be honest. Uh, tonight, Chris had had, had the juice. He um, made big shots. Uh, 
and he made he made great plays. Um, some other night it might be Giannis, some other night it might be me, but I feel like we're unselfish enough and smart enough to know <clears throat> who has the hot hand, and, and I think we all kind of trust each other in making the right play, but when it comes down to it, I don't think it matters to us who makes the play just as long as it's made.